letters and awards together. I've got a stack of newspaper clippings and, and... Medals and commendations line the walls of Rusty Butler's home. This one is for saving a life. So is this award. And when you go in and find somebody and bring them out, it just, it just, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. A Jacksonville firefighter for more than two decades, Rusty had no choice but to retire in 1996. At a real hard working fire, I just my I, my face would turn red and one thing or another, and the guys on rescue uh, checked my blood pressure and it'd be sky high and they'd have a fit. Rusty was diagnosed with heart problems and high blood pressure. For years, his medication and doctor's appointments were paid for by the city of Jacksonville. You see, there's a state statute that's been in place for decades called the Heart and Lung Bill. It protects Rusty as well as other firefighters and police officers. The statute says if there's a health problem, quote, caused by tuberculosis, heart disease or hypertension resulting in total or partial disability or death, it shall be presumed to have been suffered in the line of duty unless the contrary be shown by competent evidence. Always in good shape. Uh, I was small, but I was wiry and tough. The presumption is high blood pressure and heart disease are a direct result of a firefighter or officer's stressful job. Before law enforcement or firefighters can even start on the job, they have to pass a physical, showing that heart disease or high blood pressure does not exist. No high blood pressure, no heart problems, no, no nothing. No nothing. For seven years after he was diagnosed, Rusty says the city covered his medical bills dealing with heart problems. Then all of a sudden in 2003, he says the city just stopped paying and started denying. Sudden after seven years, and go over there one day, the doctor wanted me to have a carotid Doppler t uh, test, and workers' comp refused to pay for it. Rusty says he was shocked, but we actually found his situation is not that unusual. In fact, these are just some of the workers' comp cases recently denied by the city. According to city records, there have been 441 heart and lung claims in the past five years. More than 65% of them were denied by the city's Division of Risk Management. I don't understand why the problem. I mean, I thought it was all right there in the paperwork in black and white that I shouldn't have this problem. It's the law. That's what I thought. We tried asking the city of Jacksonville why it denied Rusty's bills, as well as denying hundreds of other police and fire claims. Numerous times we asked to speak to the chief of risk management. We also asked to talk to human resources and the office of general counsel. In fact, these are just some of the emails that have gone back and forth between us and the city since October, asking for information and interviews. The city denied all of our requests, not allowing us any further beyond this door, saying they would only take questions via email. So we sent them 41 basic questions. What we got back was very little. Either the information was protected or they told us that we'd have to pay $362,000 for the city to do some research and provide us some answers. I've had 50 to 60 cases and they've probably denied 50 to 60 cases. The doctors have told him to do Attorney it. Jake Schickel represents Jacksonville firefighters who he says have to battle it out for their workers' comp payments. Schickel says there was never a problem with getting that coverage until around 2003. The city of Jacksonville has taken the position since then and has fought uh, virtually all of them and denied compensability. He says what he can't understand is why, because the law is clear. When virtually everyone is denied, there is a pattern of denial. Have you ever asked the city or risk management why? Yes. And what do they say? That's their business and not mine. Yeah. Chickle says the fight for benefits hits you straight in the wallet. We asked the city how much an attorney's fees have been paid out to lawyers representing employees. They still haven't given us that figure. But in just two cases that we found, which went all the way to Florida's District Court of Appeals, you paid attorneys more than $97,000. Going, why in the world would you would you waste this taxpayer money? Why Attorney Mark Hardesty has fought the city numerous times for heart and lung bill benefits for JSO officers. He says the system has gone from bad to worse since 2003. He also says attorney's fees are not the only bills you are paying for. There's a number of cases that I've had where, you know, I've, I've learned that 20, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars have been spent and thrown away on some surveillance that nets absolutely nothing. 
What you are looking at is surveillance video you paid for on a retired firefighter who had to leave his job after being trapped in a fire and losing part of his lungs. Since 2002, you have paid to watch him visit a barbecue, a fire station. You paid to have someone take pictures of him walking around a job site, unloading boxes, putting up a tent, running a bulldozer, and standing around at a job site. The city told us it couldn't talk about why it followed him to all these places because state law does not allow them to. But his attorney had this to say. And the doctors all that uh, looked at all of this said, okay, yes, he can do a few things on a limited short-term basis. All right? mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Smith uh, lost uh, significant, over half of his lung capacity, uh, rescuing some people out of a fire. Uh, he won a national award from the Firefighters Association as a hero. So far, $52,750 has been spent on watching this retired firefighter. $52,000 is just horrendous. So I don't mind them going and looking in the first instance to say, is that accurate and can he do it or not? Um, there becomes a limit. Schickel says nothing ever happened with the case because of the surveillance pictures. And he questions why the surveillance continued and taxpayer money was spent. I think that that's an, a, an enormous amount of money. And if they were able and successful in, in, in proving that the person was committing fraud, then presumably the money's worthwhile. But if they didn't, then it's a tremendous waste of taxpayers' money. We asked the city how much money was spent on surveillance in the last five years. This is what they gave us. The numbers show just over 105,000 went to surveillance in 2006. That number grew over the years. In 2010, it was well over 304,000. In five years, you paid more than $831,000 on surveillance alone. More than $3,000 of that was spent it on Rusty Butler. My place and I had hired a guy to do some tractor work and they thought it was me on the tractor, but it wasn't. Remember, the city would not interview with us about how risk management is managing all of these cases. And that email we sent with 41 questions, we did ask about surveillance issues, and their response was, once again, we'd have to pay $362,000 to get answers to some surveillance questions. They also told us some information was not releasable. When we asked them how much fraud has been uncovered in the last five years because of surveillance, they asked us to define fraud. We did. We are still waiting for an answer. I would ask them why they didn't hold up to their end of the bargain when I retired under the heart lung bill. There's one there that... Uh, Rusty says every day it feels like his life is a gamble. Risk management recently denied another claim, and he had to go to court to fight for the coverage, which he got. But the process delayed him for weeks in getting the medical help he needed. So it scares you a little bit. It scares me, you know. I go in and, and I'm thinking, doggone, what if I was to, something serious was to happen, like a stroke or something, and they rushed me to the hospital, you know, I might not get taken care of because workers' comp denies it. Right. She wants oh you and God. her time to go to bed. Uh, he said, you got 